an interesting guitar came in for a setup. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Mike, the owner of Auburn Guitar, sent me a message over on my Facebook page, saying that he knew I loved 2550s, but have I ever seen one with the hearts and flowers inlays? The guy who brought this in was just getting a new nut and having a setup done. He had purchased it used. He doesn't necessarily know the history himself. I think he's curious what this thing is as well. And the owner of the shop cleared it with him before he sent me these photos and let <laughs> me make a video about it. And just as a quick shout out to him, it seems he serves the Cleveland area He's located over here in Newberry Township, and you can find him on Facebook as Auburn Guitar. So naturally, I'm looking at these photos, they came across a little bit small, and I'm going, oh my. It's either a custom order, an employee parts guitar, or somebody has messed with things. So naturally, I ask him for some more photos. But before we look at the photos he sent me, let's take a quick second to learn about the 2550th anniversary model. I've reviewed and documented quite a few of these, but it was the 25th anniversary of the Les Paul model itself, and celebrating 50 years of Les Paul, the man, being within the music business. They were pretty fancy guitars, they came in natural, ebony, wine red, and the most common, tobacco sunburst. It was the first Les Paul to feature a stock coil split switch, and they had two-piece flame maple tops, and they were generally pretty beautiful guitars. They had five-piece maple necks, a limited edition serial number. While there were a few limited editions and anniversaries prior to this model, it was the first one, in my opinion, that made a huge impact. But then the Hearts and Flowers was on the Les Paul Artisan, which I've also documented a whole bunch of, basically just the highest end Les Paul custom of its time, outside of a the Les Paul, which you can also learn about in this episode. So naturally, a guitar that blends two really cool limited editions that I love? We've got to figure out what this thing is. All right, so our first photo here is a cherry sunburst color, which is really strange because that was not a color offered on the 2550. However, just this year, a one-off in that color did exist. Sadly, it had some replaced parts, but I truly do believe this one to be a factory original. So this is a really good example of a cool one-off or something that has some sort of a story behind it. So I was really pumped that we found another one, but this one has the mini toggle. Okay, so it could be a 2550 body. We've got some aged looking speed knobs here, but ha, huh, no pick guard. There's not even a hole there, all right. Uncovered black pickups definitely could not be original. And then we just have a regular chrome TP6 tailpiece and a regular Nashville style bridge. Now I gotta remember the big thing about the Les Paul 2550 was it was the silver and gold anniversaries together. So looking at this beautiful ebony example, generally they had a main gold hardware, but they actually mixed chrome in with it as well. You see these studs right here? Those are actually called sustain sisters. They were giant brass blocks underneath it. That's why it seems a little bit larger than usual. Flipping back over to this example, it does not appear to have the sustain sisters, it just has the regular studs. And okay, this photo angle doesn't make the speed knobs look as aged, but it obviously had some replaced parts, so maybe it could still be legit. But if you look at this toggle switch, that is definitely not how Gibson does it. Gibson uses a circular skirted fastener, whereas this one just looks like a <laughs> regular nut. I guess whatever works, that could just be a replaced part. But hey, 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 hold the phone. Looking at this photo too. How many ply is that top? One, two, three, four, five. Let's go over to our ebony beauty over here. That's got more layers. That's seven. The next thing that Mike pointed out to me that he thought was kind of weird himself was the fact that there is a gap in between the neck pickup and the fretboard. Gibsons don't do that. I mean, there's a couple of models out there and occasionally it happens. It's looking like 57 classics to me. The 2550s came with a double leaded Series 7 pickup. But ooh, very strange body routes here. I'm not gonna say Gibson never has this triangular shape because again, there are weird models out there that occasionally did get that in this era. Typically, you're gonna have routes that look more so similar to this, nice and squared off. But the lacquer's definitely pretty aged on it, so let's not throw out the fact that this could just be something else that was made over with real Gibson parts. The biggest thing that struck me as odd in our initial conversations is he said this did not have a serial number at all. Remember, 2550s not only had one serial number, but they had a special serial number under that as the limited edition number. This one doesn't have anything. No Made in USA stamp. And something else that rubs me the wrong way is we don't have any headstock wings. We don't have the multi-piece neck. We do have a one-piece maple neck, though, with a volute. But in this era, Gibson did not use one-piece maple necks. Again, there's exceptions to everything, but this does not look Gibson constructed to me. 
But then we've got these Grover tuners on here. Now, they actually appear to have some age to them, but typically 2550s would have the Schallers. And I'm not seeing any holes in the headstock for those originally. But the volute shape is pretty good. But now let's flip it around to the other side and look at the face of the headstock. The first tiny photo he sent me looked like this, and I thought, okay, yeah, that's looking all right. But now seeing it the right way around, it, oh my, it's not right. So the typical headstock of a 2550 looks like this. You've got a dotted I in the Gibson. It says 25, Les Paul, 50. You've got the Les Paul Anniversary truss rod cover on it, and you got a brass nut. This one over here, it doesn't have the dot in the I. Now, Gibson logos change all the time. This is still a correct logo, but just not for this model. And then the biggest, strangest thing is Les Paul is missing from our center inlay. And he had just put the new nut on, so that's not a big deal. And obviously, we know parts have been replaced on this. We do have the proper amount of binding on here, but the headstock shape isn't quite right. Now, there are some really freaky 1980 Les Paul customs out there that do have weird looking headstocks. And this is by far the freakiest one I've ever seen. Typically, you expect them to look more so like this. But some of the headstocks do get like a little short and extra wide. And then next, I was curious about the truss rod. This certainly wasn't what I was expecting to see. I thought for sure this would have some sort of an Allen key adjustment. That is close to the Gibson style. But how about the fretboard? That's the most unique feature about this. If this would have been a real 2550 with an artisan fretboard, I would have been extremely excited. But do you see what's wrong here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inlays. Whereas the Les Paul Artisan has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where's our missing inlay? But okay, okay, let's look on the back. For reference, here's an original 2550. The back plate just doesn't quite line up. This needs moved just ever so slightly, so something strange going on there. And looking under the plate reveals this. It's routed like a regular Les Paul, except for you can clearly see where somebody has extended the cavity route just a little bit right here to put one of those mini toggles on it. 2550s, the whole thing is routed out. It's kind of like a the Paul as well. However, the Les Paul 25, which was a reissue done around 2007 that we documented in this episode, is actually routed exactly like the guitar we're looking at today. It just had what it needed routed out, but it had the big, large, extended plate because it was kind of a non-official reissue of the 2550. And obviously, everything's been swapped out in here, so we don't even need to look into that any further. Now looking along the edge, our output jack is not quite centered. We've got Schaller strap locks currently on this. The neck heel is not quite like what you normally see on a Gibson. And this has the thin binding in the cutaway. Normally that's a premium feature on a Les Paul, but a 2550 has the thick binding. So yeah, unfortunately this was not quite what I was hoping it was. It appears to be some sort of maybe a lawsuit era guitar that has been made over by a pretty competent luthier. And maybe he just pieced together an older Gibson headstock logo veneer. Maybe he did find some new old stock parts that had the 2550 done, but they just hadn't put the Les Paul writing in the center. It's either that or he custom made this himself. That would certainly explain why the inlays aren't exactly perfect. So whoever owns this guitar, you have an incredibly interesting piece that is definitely an attention getter. I hope it plays and sounds fantastic, but as far as me putting my seal of approval on this as an actual Gibson product, probably not. So how'd you guys do? Did you guess right? Maybe one day we will see a 2550 with an artisan fretboard because that would be a keeper guitar. Because you can occasionally find that on Les Paul standards. Like this Les Paul standard reissue from 1983. There was a small run of around 50-ish of these. There's this one on Reverb that claims it's factory original from 1976 on a Les Paul Custom, which it could be. However, it's had some finish work done to it and it's got some non-original parts. But I do remember at one point in time there was a mid-70s Les Paul standard that also showed up with this fretboard, so it's possible. But besides this run of prehistorics, usually the ones that show up have issues, which make me question if it really left the factory like that. But since we got some time left today, let's check out what else has this guy worked on. He's got a beautiful Koa Top Les Paul Custom from the Epiphone family. Some pretty cool modifications, I like those new knobs on that. And usually Epiphones really are just a good setup away and like a fret polish job from being excellent guitars. He's got a pretty cool Les Paul wall over here. 
Hey, this is actually incredibly helpful to see this Les Paul compared to the other ones. You see how much more rounded over this is? Now that's going to vary example to example, but you see how flat that is? That also secures it in my head that that's not quite a Gibson body. But it looks like we've got some sort of a modern Les Paul custom here, probably somewhere between 2005 and 2015. And then we've got some sort of a late 70s, early 80s one with chrome hardware. And then this looks like similar era, however it's been refinished and looks like a whole bunch of other things modified on it. Here's another pretty cool Epiphone and a nice blue burst finish. This thing caught my attention. It's a Nash 63. We had just recently did a video on Nash guitars, and I think this was the exact guitar my buddy over in Japan was looking for before he decided to settle on that blue one. Here's a Silver Burst SG. I almost thought at first it was just a single bridge pickup, but hey, this guy's just as good as Sweetwater. He's got candy. But hey, if nothing else, thank you, Mike, for sharing these photos. It's always fun for me to do these detective cases because I'm always hoping it is a real cool, crazy custom order. And sometimes you just never know the full story. But on this one, we can pretty accurately assess that, nah, didn't leave any factory looking like that. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.